Kanu, Namdi Kanu, the supreme leader of IPOB, has a lot of fake people around him. You see that his capture, the guy was betrayed. What happened to his security? Let, let's talk like people where get brain, where be intellectuals. What happened to the man's security? What happened to his security? What happened to the guys that are supposed to tip him off if anything like this is supposed to happen to him? What happened to them? Where were they? Where were the security, the guys who were supposed to tip off Namdi Kano and say, hey, tell him, look, oh, the uh, secret services after you. Or look, oh, all those uh, uh, things he had. He had some kind of a secret service. He had an Eastern security team. He had this, he had that. Where were all of them? That they should capture him like they capture just anybody. There are some people in this world that in trying to capture them, a lot of people will die in the process. There are some people in this world that in trying to capture them, the, the damage will be so great even to that place. That hotel room or whatever, that place would, would come down. How could it be that the person who is trying to lead a major ethnic group, in fact, the South South, in fact, Southern Nigeria to freedom, was just captured like a normal human being, like anyhow, like anyhow person. How could that have happened? And I'm going to tell you now that the only way those kind of things happen is when there's betrayal. Believe you me, that guy has been betrayed in a massive way. The, the betrayal is massive. And I know that a lot of you will say, oh, this guy don't begin to talk. They run him out. No, it's not about running his mouth. You guys think now. You think it's like the victory of the Nigerian Secret Service to just capture the guy. Nigerian Secret Service just capture the guy. No. The guy has been betrayed. Big time. And you know what? A lot of people around Nandi Kano are fake. Even now that he's been betrayed, have you seen the silence? Nobody's. How many people have really come forward in an attempt to create a ruckus that could lead to at least the foreign powers and a lot of other groups noticing his capture? People are quiet. People are quiet because a lot of people around him in fact, people are so quiet that nobody has even attempted to make a video like I'm making here in North America. I am from a quiet home state, though. When I was making videos for on behalf of IPOB and all that stuff, I was the only person making videos in North America. Of the millions of Igbo people here, nobody would come forward to make a video because he doesn't want his face to be seen. The person that is in charge of media, media, in charge of media for IPOB, it resides in Houston, Texas. Do you know the person's name? Have you seen any publication by the person? I mean, in charge of media. You know what? To me, if you're in charge of media, you should be the one that should arrange for Namdi Kanu to talk to BBC. You should be the one that arranged for him to talk to CNN. You should make so much noise. Media should be the guys that make so much noise that the whole world gets tired of hearing the case. Media should be the ones that will make sure that IPOB is advertised on Times International is advertised in Newsweek, is advertised in, um, in Black Entertainment <laughs> Magazine. Media has a lot of work to do, especially when you're trying to create a country. A country. But this media was very, very quiet. Why? Because a lot of people, mark my video. This is one of the hardest videos I ever made. A lot of people around Namdi Kano are fake. Me... They talked to, they said he's not Igbo, he's not Igbo. They did everything to make sure that guy doesn't work with me. Even at some point, people came and deceived me and said that the Supreme Commander <clears throat> has ordered you to stop making videos. I picked up the phone and called the Supreme Commander's brother and other people around him and they said that that kind of statement was not made and has never been made before. Someone went and told and said the Supreme Commander has told you to stop making, someone in Dallas Dallas, Texas, lied to me and said that to me. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. When I And I stopped. The person who told me this was a, of a higher rank. So when they told me to stop making videos, I stopped making videos for so many months. I just sat down there. Then one day, I just someone called me from Dubai and said to me, why are you not making videos about Biafra anymore? And I told the person, because I was ordered to by the Supreme Commander. They said, Nalai. They now called the Supreme Commander and said, did so and so, did you tell so and so to order Clayton to stop making videos? The Supreme Commander said, no. That's when I knew what IPOB is about. A lot of people in IPOB, Namauto, 
They are looking for position inside IPOB. But when it comes to moments like this, you will never see anything like a video from them. You will never see anything to show that they know that there is a problem. You won't see anything. They want position. They want to be in charge of IPOB Houston, in charge of IPOB Chicago. They want to be in charge of IPOB, just like Nigeria. They want to be in charge of IPOB in Atlanta or in London. Or they want to be treasurer. They're the ones collecting all this money. All this money. They're collecting money and, and issuing receipts. Receipts. Here in Houston, there were more than five people collecting money. Claiming they were treasurer at the same time. There is a lot of things going on. But the problem is the betrayal of that. Do you know that the way I see that guy, he's fighting by himself. Oh. The people around him, forget it. I'm waiting for IPOB to issue an official statement on this issue. They're quiet. I know a lot of you, because a lot of you have been brainwashed and programmed. You say, oh, you don't talk anyhow. You don't give your statements anyhow so that they may not know. I've heard a lot of that. I've heard a lot of that. And that comes from bad advice. Bad advice. Bad advice. Real bad advice. I've heard a lot of the brainwashing. Oh, you don't say this. You don't say that. You keep quiet. You stay like that. You do this. Inside that silence, who is making a move? Nobody. I've really spent a lot of time in IPOB and I've studied IPOB. And what I've seen, I am so sorry for Namdi Kano. He's alone. That guy is fighting alone. That guy is by himself. He has been betrayed. <laughs> See, for somebody of his level to be picked up that way, it would have been better if he was just a normal civilian and they pick a normal civilian like that. For someone of his level to be picked up in that manner, that guy is by himself. Oh. He has no security. He had nothing. In fact, it was God that was with him. And I pray that the God who helped him to create such a movement will also help him to be released. But when it comes to those who are around him, they're fake. A lot of the people around Nandi Kanu are fake. A lot, I'm talking as an acquired man who penetrated the system and was part of the system and wanted to be in a struggle that I thought was going to save the whole of southern Nigeria. A lot of the people around Nandi Kanu, all they're looking for is money or position. A lot of them are fake. Mark my words, I'm putting this on social media today. My name is Clayton Udo. Platinum Noachinike. One of the biggest video guys when it came to talking about Biafra, I would talk about Biafra passionately and be the only person in North America, the whole North American continent, nobody would release a video. But they all are in support of Biafra. If you cannot stick your neck out for a, a struggle, you cannot stick your neck out for a struggle, then what's the use of that struggle? How can a struggle survive when you are not ready to identify with the struggle? You don't want anybody in the world to know you're part of the struggle. You're a secret follower. Which struggle have you seen that secret followers? If you have a struggle and 90% of the struggle people are all secret followers, how can that struggle succeed? If everybody where they in charge of, except the people in Nigeria that will come out and hold flags and run around on the streets and get shot. But I'm talking about the United States. I'm talking about London. I'm talking about China. I'm talking about oh, the guys. Oh, they are secret followers. They don't want anybody to see them on social media. They don't want anybody to know their name. If there's a crowd matching, they'll go out with a crowd because how can you identify everybody in the crowd? See, all this big sense, it comes back to bite us. So big sense, it always comes back to bite us. That big sense where you too savvy, you too know, you too know, it always comes back to bite us in the end. It will always come back to destroy our lives. Too much of sense, you too know, you too know. In the end, the Supreme Commander Namdi Kanu shouldn't have been picked up that way. My theory, call it a conspiracy theory, call it whatever you want to call it, is that he's been betrayed from the inside. And the betrayal is massive. That his movements were known, that they could pick him in transit. It wasn't like he was in one place when they picked him. He was in a move. He was moving. He was from moving from one place to the other and somewhere in transit he was picked up and people are now saying you see weak people do weak stupid things 
we should boycott Kenyan Airlines. What has Kenyan Airlines got to do with it? What has Kenyan Airlines got to do with it? How was it that his inner circle couldn't explain to him in Kenya that he was being tracked? What has, when you see stupid, and they say all oh, the Igbo liars of Nigeria are saying they should ban Kenyan Airlines. When you see stupid people do stupid things, what has Kenyan Airlines got to do with it? Airlines is just like we ban bus because they've been put person inside bus, carry and go prison. We don't ban that bus. Nobody should enter that bus anymore. Forget that it's an airline or it's an airplane. It's just a mode of transportation. It's just a mode of transportation. And please pass this video around to those Igbo lawyers or whatever they claim they are saying that we should ban Kenya Airlines. That's stupid. They're technically stupid. Their stupidity is very great. It's very big. It's very, very huge. They have Their stupidness is very wide and very, very massive. What do you mean by they have to ban Kenyan? It has nothing to do with Kenyan Airlines. The question everybody should ask is, who betrayed him from inside? That's the question everybody should ask. Who leaked his movements? Where he was moving from where to where? Who is the guy that leaked it and got money? That's the question people should ask. Because his movements is supposed to be top secret. When Mumus are involved in operations, they will look at other stupid things. They won't ask the main question. The person who has betrayed him is, is on the loose. That person shouldn't be allowed to escape because that person is the worst. That is the worst thing that can happen to Igbo people. The person who leaked his movement, his movements are never. I'm going to tell you something as an insider who has been involved and listening to what goes on. His movements are never, ever released to anybody on earth. His movements are top secret. In fact, none of you in this forum, including me, knows the itinerary of his movements. How was it leaked? How was just his movements leaked? And most of the time when he moves, he doesn't move with his own name. He uses an alias. He uses another name to move around from place to place. He uses an alias. How was it leaked? How was he identified? Dan Betrayer. Because he always has a group around him. Who in that group betrayed him? Is the question we should ask today. Not uh, ban Kenyan Airlines. And ban this. And talk, and talk shit. Listen, let me explain another thing to you that is very, very interesting. I heard something. I've heard two things. Two things in the last few months. Or a few weeks, I might say. First, there are a lot of people who say, and it's good they captured him because he used to stay in America and tell us to go and do things and we get killed. Look, you see this thing they call freedom. You see this thing that they call emancipation. You see this thing that you're looking for jobs and you can't find jobs. You see this thing that we're talking about in life. If you won't do it, nobody will do it for you. That this man was ready to do it and scatter his family. I mean, what I mean by scatter is military enter in his family compound. Military enter Nandi Kano's compound. Military, that guy at one point was someone that if they could find him, they would kill him. They would kill him quick. They were trying everything they could to deal with that guy. They mess up that guy's family compound. People have died around him, dear people that he loved. For him to want to push this movement, he, he could have just stayed in London and live a peaceful life with his wife and have a very great life. So when people open their mouth and say, eh, it's good that he, he, has, he has been captured because he was ordering people, he was trying to help people. But if you guys don't want to help yourselves, that's fine. See, I hate stupid talk, stupid, 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 mediocre talk. How can you be saying that someone is trying to help you to escape from a situation? Look, go and look at the other time I went home. There's no more roads from Aba to just go to a, a simple place like Auchi. You, you guys don't have roads. And someone has come forward and he wants to try and help you guys. To, and you guys are now laughing at the person has been captured. Because you don't want trouble. In which the other day I was watching a show. Who in this world has ever succeeded without trouble? How can Nigerians are lazy, lazy? You don't, you want things, but you don't want the trouble that goes behind getting those things. How can you want a situation where you want fine roads in Igbo land, you want um, a infrastructure, you want all these things, but you don't want the trouble that comes with it, and you expect that people will come and give it to you for free? And so, therefore, people are rejoicing that Nandi Kanu has been captured because he brought trouble to us. He was bringing us trouble. 
Meanwhile, see, you don't understand. This society is not a homogeneous society. Nigeria is not homogeneous in nature. You know, what I mean by not being homogeneous, see, America can succeed because everybody's an American. Europe can succeed because everybody is European. Saudi Arabia can succeed because everybody in Saudi Arabia is Muslim. Everybody is of one group in Saudi Arabia. So it's easy to succeed there. Dubai is okay because everybody in Dubai is Muslim. If you're going there, you're going there as a visitor. Nigeria's problem is that half of the country is one culture, the other half is another. One half is Christian, the other half is Muslim. One half are intellectuals, the other half are people who just sit down and eat oil money. We are the producers of the wealth and there are those in the north are the users of the wealth. And there are people in Igbo land who believe that somehow the north will one day become reasonable and come and just be dashing them money and repairing their roads for them and making everything good. And then you had someone like Namdi Kano who came up and said, enough is enough. The, 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 the way things are is not right. The way things are going is horrible. And that we need a situation. We need a serious situation where things will be changed. And you guys caught up and rejoiced that he's been destroyed. You rejoice that he's been captured. And then, I, like I heard, one girl was saying something. And that is, you hear, you know, there's a way people talk. And you know that this is how a goat would talk if it was allowed the gift of speech. You know, when goats, goats can't talk. But if they were given the gift of speech, this is how a goat would talk. She started saying, it's good they captured him. See, because he used to stay in America and tell us to go and fight and we get killed. If you don't fight, where will your freedom come from anyway? This guy had, look, this guy had the option to just stay in London and never worry about Nigeria again. Like a lot of Nigerians have done. Thousands of Nigerians have left Nigeria and they don't care about Nigeria anymore. They don't give a damn about Nigeria. Lamdi Kano was actually working for a radio station. He could have just stayed there and operated his radio station, get his money, enjoy his life in London, chop pepper soup, sleep with that, his beautiful wife, have children, live a very comfortable life. It wasn't easy for him to be running around the world the way he was running around suffering. Sometimes he cannot sleep in the same place twice. The guy went through hell. The guy went through real hell. You think that like, oh, you think because he's flying in aeroplanes that that is enjoyment of life. That is not enjoyment. If you know that a whole country is trying to kill you, that is, there's no enjoyment in that. And then people who strong hard to open their mouth and say that it's good they captured him, that he uh, he, want, he almost made us to have problems like war and this and this and that. People will, will rejoice in his capture. And not just normal people, Igbo people. Igbo people are rejoicing in his capture. The person who was trying to fight for them. <laughs> See, in my own... Um, submission in this story which i think is just is, is one of the saddest stories on earth is let nigerians know one thing yes you guys did a demonstration in the end the demonstration they opened fire and killed most of you guys after that if you have human brain you should know what you're dealing with and you adjust i'm not giving you any suggestions on what to do but you should adjust and know what you're dealing with can you guys even picture a Nigeria after Buhari where it's going to? Can you guys picture it? If I called any of you here to come out on this show and tell me the Nigeria after Buhari, what they're trying to install after Buhari, can you guys picture it? Can you guys picture what's going to happen in Nigeria after Buhari? If we, for example, right now, 3% of the oil allocation is being put in special bank accounts by Buhari, where is that money going to? Meanwhile, uh, what do they call it? Um, what was the name of that place? The Nigerian Oil Company. is an NPC or whatever you call it. NNPC or whatever. NNPC is broke. The Fulanese have ransacked it. They will empty the account, empty everything. The person, someone is collecting 3% of the oil allocation from the South and putting it in special bank accounts. Can you explain to me the Nigeria that you guys will have after this, since you are rejoicing over Nandi Kanu being captured? You guys, you, I don't know. When I left Nigeria, I left Nigeria, and I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. I'm not saying that I'm a great guy. But when I left Nigeria, when I went back to Nigeria, 
I now understood Nigeria's problem. When I left Nigeria and got exposed, I went back to Nigeria. I understood Nigeria's problem. The way Nigerians think is their downfall. The way Nigerians think is horror. Is horror. How can you want a better country if you're not ready to struggle for it? Everybody has the same mentality. They want to go into politics and chop money. And if it is not as easy as that, then it is Wahala. Even the women, you see how the women think. A man should come and spe- pay all their bills and take care of them without them working. And Nigerians don't want to work for anything. You don't want to work for even your own personal freedom. I, the other time I was listening to one woman, the way she was talking, I told her, you said you shouldn't have been born now. If you were born here for another man to take care of you, there was no need for you to be born. That man was born naked. You as a woman, you were also born naked. Why is your case like this? You have two hands and two feet. You cannot even fix, figure out your life until a man comes and pays all your bills. You can't figure out your life. See, it is a tragedy that Namdi Kanu has been captured. And I want you to know, and I want those who are watching this video to know, that he's been betrayed. The betrayal is massive. And IPOB needs to suspend his operations and find out who betrayed him inside there. Please pass this to every IPOB member. The betrayal, I'm talking from an advanced brain thinking. The betrayal of Namdi Kanu is massive. Is a massive betrayal. And IPOB needs to stop its operations and find out who did the betrayal because his movements are not public knowledge. His name, he doesn't use, he doesn't go around signing into hotels and everything with the name Namdi Kanu. He doesn't do that. He doesn't go around saying at a hotel, my name is Namdi Kanu and signs in. He doesn't go around to the airports and shows a passport, Namdi Kanu, here is my, he doesn't do that. So how did they get him in transit? He was betrayed. And the betrayal is very, very massive. This is more than you guys make nice about a Chema 4, a Chema 4, a Chema 4, whatever is the name of that guy. This is more than that. This is way, this is the most deadly betrayal I've ever seen in my life. And IPOB needs to examine itself. If, if this is what's going to happen in IPOB, like maybe if I make this video, the next thing I know is Kulani boys controlling Interpol will step into my house and carry me. Then there is a problem. I am accusing IPOB on this one. If it's going to be that anybody involved in the struggle, suddenly Fulani boys will suddenly get the lowdown of the person using Interpol to go and pick the person, then there's a problem. How are the Fulani boys that are controlling Interpol, how do they have access to this knowledge? And how can it be? And to show you how massive this problem is, the normal extradition, extradition, whatever, was not, was not followed. Protocols for extrad- extraditing a person. The protocols for extraditing a person, they know full harm. They just pick this guy. Like I said, they pick criminal. Even criminal, there are, there are protocols for extraditing a person. Who is the judge that signed that, that extraditing treaty on him? Who, how did they extradite him like that? I am telling you, the betrayal from IPOB is very massive. Me, I fear IPOB now. I don't get respect for them anymore. The betrayal is massive because that guy doesn't always travel alone. He travels with a group. And his movements are secret. And there are people who, and we want to know who betrayed that guy. This thing I'm telling you, nobody has made this video. And nobody's thinking on this level right now as I'm talking to you. Nobody's asking these questions. And I say that we have passed this video around. Let them ask this question. Who betrayed that guy? Who betrayed that guy? The betrayal is massive. It's on a massive level. Look, let me tell you one thing about how law enforcement works. The way law enforcement works is they must always... Law enforcement always fails if it is siloed. What do I mean by it being siloed? Is if it's an outside, if they're from the outside trying very hard to penetrate the system. Those of you who watch movies a lot and those of you who studied law enforcement know that they must push an insider in. The insider is what you call a mole or a deep cover agent, deep cover. So you have what is called a mole. Or a deep cover agent, that person inside will pretend like he's part of the system and will be reporting to the outside. That's the only way they capture people that way. You cannot just capture people by technology. Or you can't. You can't always capture people only by technology. You must have a mood inside. People call them CIs, confidential informants. And the informant's name is always secret. The FBI, the CIA, every secret service in the world uses spies. 
There has to be a spy, an insider. And the insider cannot be an orphaner. It has to be an evil person. It has to be a person of that origin, of that system. So the insider who is involved in betraying a system can never ever be, if you're trying to betray the United States, you can never just take someone who is not American, very, very American, into the system. If you want to betray um, Ethiopians, you have to take someone who can speak Ethiopian, who can act like an Ethiopian, and who dresses like an Ethiopian into that system that will feed you guys back information. So there's a mole involved. That is what I'm trying to make you to understand, which I know some of you are not even thinking on that level. There is a mole. Who's the mole? Who's the deep cover agent? That evil man is the that evil man, the person that has done that thing. Pass this video around for everybody. That deep cover agent, that evil man, that evil person, that deep cover agent, that person that is inside, he's inside the inner circle of Namdi Kanu, is the one that has betrayed Namdi Kanu for him to be captured like that. I'm telling you, people who, who of the level of, don't get captured like that, though. There was one time, I don't know if you guys remember, this is Slobodan, Slobodan Milosevic. Slobodan Milosevic, he was the same kind, he was the equivalent of Nandi Kano for, I think, uh, his, uh, Bosnia, his uh, Govinia or something like that in those days during when Clinton was president. Was it Bosnia, his uh, Govinia, one of these places? So there was this guy called Slobodan, Slobodan Milosevic. American forces combined with native forces to go and capture him like that. What happened? They fought all night. You don't forget the guy. In fact, they called in air support. I remember as a young man watching the video of that thing, it was blood. I said, how can someone survive in this compound? And the funny part of the story is that Slobodan wasn't captured that day. But the, the, the kind of shelling and fire, where they fired that day, it was beyond. Me, I was like, child, Jesus Christ, is this for one man? They opened fire, they fired, they, they keep, people died real good. People died. They couldn't capture Slobodan below Sovijo. But and see how they just pick Namdi like say, no, they pick her like small boy. They pick Namdi. He's betrayal. Trust me. The betrayal is massive. I will end this video here because you've got the message. He's been betrayed. I would really like to know the Ibu man that did that thing. The insider, inside IPOB that did that thing. I would really like to know that person. Because that kind of betrayal is beyond understanding. Thank you for watching.